Hi guys and welcome to the new video about Delta Lake. So today we are going to focus on maybe a less known feature of Delta Lake, which is the vacuum command. And typically it's maybe it's not a well-known feature, but it's quite important to do because it helps to keep your storage space under control. Otherwise, remember each delayed operation, each update will invalidate, kind of invalidate previous previous files and create a new ones with the valid data for the current version of the table. And if you have configured a retention period and you don't have defined and you don't use the vacuum, well, your storage space will indefinitely grow. And that's the reason why the vacuum is there. It's exactly the same purpose as for relational databases, like for example, PostgreSQL, where when you delete or update the row, typically when you delete the row, sorry, typically you invalidate some tiny space in, on your disk. And later with the vacuum, there is some kind of compaction happening that will make this tiny space available for other uh, writes for other operations. So here you are using uh, I let uh, object store as 3 GCS or Azure storage and there is no there is no such a way as having uh, continuous disk space but there is a cost so here with vacuum you can save your cost and keep everything under control you will never ask yourself why this file is there while the uh, the commit while there is no commit referencing it, for example. So let's go to the demo and see what are the features of a vacuum. And the first feature is that the vacuum will not work every time, especially when you have a different rotation duration on your table and different rotation duration for the vacuum operation itself. So let me run the code and I already put some hints here, but it will generate an exception saying that the the operation is not allowed for that kind of for that uh, for that specific duration okay as you can see we have the exception knowing that our delayed uh, file retention duration is of three weeks and we tried to vacuum files of two days well we cannot do that unless we disable the retention duration check explicitly so let's see now an example that works and this example has again a deleted file retention we create the table at some rows and we do a, a delete from sorry i will remove the slip uh, we delete delete the data from this uh, table not all because we will want to keep some of them to for the purpose of the final select later just describe to know what 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 the table is what are the properties and later uh, the vacuum with the retain configuration set to zero hours, meaning that we can reclaim the deleted files immediately. So later I'm doing the select and I will show you the history table. And the difference is that here I will set this retention duration check enabled to false, so that it, there, there, will, there will not be this kind, this uh, hourly weekly constraint on the, on the operation itself. And let me run the code. You will clearly see what I mean here. Okay, we have the describe action. Sure, we still have this attention duration set to three weeks. But since we disabled the check, we should be able to perform the vacuum currently. We have now running the vacuum, yes. And select history should follow very soon. Okay, so that's fina finally there. We have the confirmation that vacuum that happened. We have the result of our select. So we have only five rows. And here we also have in the history table of our data table, the information about the vacuum. So it, so it took seven seconds to run and it completed successfully. And do we have something else in there? Yes, you can, we can see that we also have some stats so we have the files that should be deleted and in the end uh, line in the end event we have the number of really deleted uh, files and the impacted directories too 
and that was for the kind of optimistic version but uh, this uh, retention this uh, retention check is not there by mistake is there it's there on purpose because if you define your vacuum rotation for a too short period of time you can encounter some concurrency issues with the writers readers so we can even which can even lead to a corrupted state of your table and that's currently what the demo from this part that i am the most proud of because it was not easy to find out how to demonstrate this co corrupted uh, situation so and to do that uh, i'm again i'm disabling the check and i'm creating the table as previously but now instead of doing an append sequentially i'm starting two different processes two different threads and one thread will add we will do three inserts into the table and in the second thread i will verify the size of my table directory and if there is the same size as in the beginning it means that the files from the previous thread are not yet there but when it changes when it changes i will start a, a i will start a vacuum and i'm hoping here that by starting the vacuum in the second thread just after creating the first file i will introduce some concurrency issues some corruption corrupted state because the vacuum remember the vacuum removes all the untracked files so if i'm currently writing new files in this previous thread and i'm running the vacuum on this one and this transaction is not yet committed well the vacuum will, will see these files and we'll see that they are not referenced by any a commit log and it will consider them as untracked and we will remove them and typically during the commit uh, we should have a failure on that part and the table would will be in a in a corrupted state and again uh, in the end i'm doing the history so here i have some expected output and i'm doing the select just in case it just if it could work for some reason and so i will run the, the code now and we will see if i get the same outcome so if i get the concurrency uh, error okay so now we detected the new file on the directory on my delta table and we also initialized the, the vacuum and during that time we are creating new files from that so, so hopefully some of these transactions will reference files removed by the vacuum removed by the vacuum remember because at the moment when the back vacuum runs those files are untracked and that's typically the reason why you shouldn't run the vacuum on a very small very short period because yeah when you have some concurrent and continuous writers or that either inserts the data or does or do some updates well it can lead to the inconsistencies as well okay you already see that it didn't work so i will rerun it again and yes yes how fortunately this time it uh, failed so it failed why does why did it fail it failed because as you can see what is the message yes you can see that the file this file and does not exist so i will just copy it and show you and i will show you now the commit log because typically this file will be referenced by one of the commits and maybe not zero i mean maybe let's do it differently And yes, you can see that we have this file referenced 
by the very first up and action meaning that yeah you can you can clearly see that the vacuum action interleaved with the concurrent uh, by the right with the writing action and it led to inconsistent state of the table because as you can see here sure we can do this um, history display but we cannot run the select anymore on that table because there is no the file that should be there because of this concurrency issue so i would maybe just include the message to be much more explicit on that And okay, so that was the trickiest example to find out. And as you can see, it don't work. It doesn't work every time. So there is this concurrency, which is not very predictable. And besides, there are some easier parts. So the easier parts like uh, dry runs. So I will just maybe comment, uncomment these parts. Dry run, which is kind of, well, it's a dry run. So it just simulates the execution it gives you the number of files that will be removed and it doesn't perform any other action but to know these files the dry run runs under the, the same algorithm as the removal part so on a big volume of data it can be costly because under the hood it's it lists all the content of of the of your log storage compares it with the content of the commit log and later whether you have some hidden or not hidden files or directories it it includes them so yeah, it can be a costly operation also but it can be useful when for example you want to make this uh, vacuum action uh, manually validated so when you run first your vacuum later maybe your ci cd gets the information about the number of removed files and if it's fine and the, you can you can click go and execute the real uh, vacuum uh, after that so now i'm running the vacuum on on the same uh, scenario as previously so i have this slip which is useless here i will run the describe and will the vacuum and here we will have some 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 information about the files to remove that will be one of two examples for the dry run in the second one i will run the dry run and show you that it also includes some untracked files that are not really the par a part of a delta table well the part of delta table that has never been part of this date of the delta table to be more precise so again we will have to wait some time to see the vacuum results okay so now we can see that we have three files that should be cleaned and that one directory will be unpacked so that that's all and now we can stop it and see the scenario for the five demo in the five demo we again create the same data sets perform the same action and this time we do the first dry run on the table and typically this dry run should reference all the files uh, impacted by this delete from operation and in the second part, I will create some dummy files that should also be impacted by, by, by the operation. And typically we, we should see some differences in the, in the output. So let me run the code. Okay, have the, we have the first result, the result for the first vacuum, there are three files. And so, since we are adding here uh, other files, we will also have uh, them included in the second uh, vacuum dry run and you can see that we have now the result for the second vacuum we have five files that are included in this operation so yeah this is a proof that not only the files that was previously referenced by a delta table but that was removed by the delayed and uh, checkpoint operations are concerned by the vacuum it's everything inside the delta table location except except hidden files because when you check out the when you check the implementation out 
you will see that the method that lists the files has some hidden your name and hidden file name filters that will ignore all files and directories so typically directories no that will ignore all files and directories because it's in the different parts anyway that starts with a dot the underscore delta index on the change data so and that explains one and that explains one very often you will see a recommendation to use things starting by an underscore like for example for structure steaming jobs uh, checkpoint location inside your delta lake table storage well you should prefix it, prefix it by any of these characters because otherwise it can be dropped by the vacuum and your job may uh, fail and couldn't and won't be recoverable unless you de de enable some kind of object versioning on your object storage and the final part the final part is is here so I will not run it just to show you the configuration properties that are also important if you want to accelerate the uh, the vacuum so I showed you already the retention check disable enable flag and there is also a different one which is the parallel delayed enable and parallel delayed parallelism meaning that when you enable them and define the parallelism a part is part will repartition all the paths to 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 clean up and typically it will it will be able to do the cleaning in parallel so let me just show you quickly the implementation part for that it's not that complex so here we have the files and there is a kind of a delete somewhere which is called uh, yes we have the delete on the files remember the files here are just uh, paths in this data set and later when we enable the flag uh, this data set will be repartitioned so shuffled and we will have um, different partitions and in different partitions as delay action will be made on the fire on this given path and that's all for the vacuum I agree it's kind of high level even though I share some low level details in the end of this uh, video but the good news is that you can learn some implementation details in the blog post which is linked in the description of this video. It was Bartosz Kniestyn from waitingforcut.com. Thanks for watching.